Hey guys, Lauren and Rebecca here with BizRock. In this week's video, we're gonna talk about a concept that Rebecca, I'd say you probably get the most pushback in any office. Um, so I want you to brace yourself guys, but it is really important and that is yes. radio communication. So Rebecca, why is that so important? Because I know you get a lot of pushback and usually it takes a few weeks of them trusting you and saying, okay, fine, I'm gonna try it your way. And then that's when you get the phone call or text message and be like, okay, I'm glad I listened to you. Yes. So why is it important? Um, radio communication is important, number one reason. Guys, nobody wants to hear you yelling down your hallway. Oh, right. Okay, so say you forgot something. Mm -hmm. That's okay. It happens. You do not want to get up. Remember, we've already talked about that in a previous mm -hmm. video. You do not want to get up and ever have to leave the doctor alone or the patient alone by themselves in the operatory. You can actually radio one of your team members, and they're going to come and bring you whatever it is you need. Mm -hmm. Or, for instance, the patient's on nitrous, and you have to go to the restroom. Again, we're all human. It happens. Yes. You can't just get up and leave your patient there. Mm -hmm. So instead of wheeling your assistant chair to the hallway and hollering, <laughs> I need somebody in op two, you just quietly get on your radio, and you can get and ask. Ask yes. and receive what you need. Radio communication is so viable, and you can only talk to your team members in the back. You communicate with the ladies and gentlemen up front as well, which yes. is great. Now, so I, I personally love radio communication because I know it helps with efficiency and it just allows everybody to be on the same page. But what are your thoughts when it comes to doctors wearing radios? Because I know over the years we've had a few that yeah. are like, I am wearing a radio. I love this. What are your thoughts? <laughs> Okay, this is a very touchy subject, I feel like, for a lot of practices. Doctors, it's okay. You can let go a little bit. I mm -hmm. personally do not care for a doctor to wear a radio, and this Agreed. is why. Yes. I feel like a doctor that has a very strong team behind them, mm -hmm. they're literally guided by their team. Yes. That's what we're there for. Mm -hmm. So they do not need to hear what else is going on behind the scenes mm -hmm. because we as their teammates are going to tell them where they need to go and yes. they can pay attention to what they are there for. And mm -hmm. that is going to be producing and working on their patients. Love that. Well, it takes the pressure off the doctor too. Yes. Um, but more importantly, it shows your team that you trust them. It's like, mm -hmm. I trust Absolutely. you to guide me where I need to go and to take care of, um, you know, our patients and make mm -hmm. sure that I'm where I need to be when I need yeah. to be there. That's what makes a great team and really an exceptional practice. So I'm glad that you brought that up. It does. It does. And guys, also the main important thing is, is keep the verbiage to a minimum. Oh, so, good. so that is normally when I get pushed back, it's mm -hmm. there's too much chitter chatter. I don't yes. want to hear so and so's plans for the weekend. I don't want to hear a conversation. Mm -hmm. Guys, the key is keep it to three words or less. Which is what you want to focus on. That's very specific. I mean, it, it is. To your point, then it kind of limits all of the chatter in the background or it weekend does. plans or, you know, full on conversations about the entire patient's health history. Yeah. It's like, come on, guys, like a few words. <laughs> if you need more information, that is when it's appropriate to tell the patient you'll be right back and yes. then exit the operatory. Again, tell the patient, don't just get up and leave. Mm -hmm. If it's something extensive, that's what I would prefer you do. Mm -hmm. Three words or less, normally you can kind of figure it out. We do have what we call a cheat sheet, and it's a radio communication cheat sheet. If you would like that, please let us know, and we can get that email to you. Mm -hmm. But just for an example, doc op and then the operatory number. Hygiene, okay. hygiene ready op and the number. Keep it very, very simple and to the point. If you're needing somebody, assistant needed, operatory number. Mm -hmm. Like just keep it very small, very small communication that people can hear you. The other problem we have is as a clinician, you're in the back and you have the hear earpiece going off in one ear, you have the handpiece going off in the yes. other ear, and then we have the doctors, which guys, we know they mumble underneath their masks. Sorry, docs, you do. <laughs> um, and you're trying to hear everything. So what happens is you end up doing this and knocking your earpiece out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then we cannot communicate to the person in the operatory via the radio because it's no longer in their ear. Mm -hmm. So you keep asking and asking and asking with no results, and yes. that's why. So if we make sure we keep the chitter-chatter to a minimum, everybody keeps their ears mm -hmm. in, and the first time you have to use it, you'll love it. You'll yes. absolutely love it. I have gotten some people, I didn't want to do this. I was not mm -hmm. looking forward to having that in my ear with the mask and my loops. Guys, there's multiple different kind of ears. Mm -hmm. You have one that can go actually inside your ear and one that hangs over. Order what's comfortable for you. Yes. Everybody is different. Mm -hmm. I say order one of every kind that you can find. Mm -hmm. Amazon has a million. Send the ones back that you don't like. Try them out. That's going to be key is finding one that's comfortable and utilizing it so that you can keep it in all day. Mm -hmm. And we're not trying to radio to you and realizing that you're walking around with it hanging down off of you. 
Yes. Otherwise, it's not effective. It is not um, effective. Because if only a couple clinical team members are willing to wear it, then what's the point? Um, so everybody does have to make a commitment, which mm -hmm. docs, this comes from you. This comes from you saying, you know what? I want to try this. I want to yeah. see how more efficient we become. And, you know, I hear all the time, you know, how do I become a well-oiled machine? Well, this is one of the ways. It is. This is one of the ways to help streamline communication in your practice. And I know some of you are like, yeah, we have the old school messages, which guys, I've been there. We both did that before and I get it. But unless it's doing an alert, which by the way, I don't want an alert every five seconds in the office, but most importantly, it doesn't create that sense of urgency for the it team. Doesn't. Now, Rebecca, you've also been a clinician for a very long time and you're kind of an expert in it and you've done radio communication. Have there been times where you're like, I have to take my radio out um, because this is a, you know, a lengthy procedure or something's going on. You know, can you still communicate that to the rest of the team so that they'll they yes. know? So if I am, for instance, doing a large implant case. Mm -hmm. I prefer not to have anything yes. extra on. I want to be able to focus on my patient. Mm -hmm. Not just that, but there is a lot of verbal mm -hmm. communication between the doctor and myself. So taking that out and sitting, mm -hmm. this is the key, is telling your teammates because you will actually sit it down on your 12 o'clock unit and you can have the volume up, but the patient's going to hear. That is okay, guys, if we're utilizing the three words or less. Yes. And remember HIPAA, you have to keep that in so at all good. times because even though it's on a radio, somebody could be around with it turned mm -hmm. up because they're hard of hearing and a patient can hear them, especially if they're down at hygienist cleaning. You have to remember how, how close we are. Mm -hmm. The proximity that we are with the patient, they can actually hear what we're hearing in our ear. Mm -hmm. So making sure that your volume is cut down or that we are actually using the verbiage that we are training on. I love that so much. Well, and it's also, that's why morning huddle is so important, which I know it sounds like we're beating a dead horse when it comes to morning huddle, but that's one of those things like, hey guys, I've got this large implant, implant case today at 11, so I will not have a radio on me during that time. Right. Just if somebody needs me, please come to the operatory. Mm -hmm. like, that's part of your pre-planning for your day, it is. right? It is so, so important. Mm -hmm. I, I can't talk enough about morning huddle or chart review. So um, thank you for mentioning that. But that is the time that you're going to be able to tell your team members when you're going to have your ear in and mm -hmm. if you need to take it out. I do not suggest taking it out all the time, yes. but if you're having a large case presented mm -hmm. in the office that day, it is okay to take it out. Or if you're having a one-on-one with a patient, take it out so that the patient knows you're giving them your full attention at that time. Mm -hmm. But you need to tell the team, stepping into a consult, so that they know. We all know yes. each other's voices. Yep. And that way, if somebody's actually calling for you and they didn't hear you, another team mm -hmm. member is going to say, hey, Rebecca's in a consult. She yes. can't answer her radio right now. It's just the communication aspect and the office as a whole. We need to come together as a team and learn how to communicate effectively. Love that. Last couple of things, because we've got a lot of large practices where there's multiple doctors mm -hmm. and multiple hygienists and the poor doctors are up and down and up and down checking hygiene exams left and right. But sometimes they're not efficient with their time. Yes. You know, if you're an assistant, you can control when to interrupt your doctor yes, you can. or you can listen, you know, great morning huddle. You can prepare mm -hmm. like, hey, if I'm doc, I'm going to check the 10 o'clock um, for Susie and Jennifer. Um, but Rebecca's going to let me know when I can go do that. So a great clinician can listen, mm -hmm. you know, hygiene ready op three, but she doesn't interrupt the doctor no. until she hears that hygiene ready op four. Right? right. And I know you've done that before. I have. And um, there's another thing you can do is actually red and green. So yes. red and green, I love to use that. So when a hygienist is done, they've actually taken their images and the doc's mm -hmm. able to come in. They may not be done with the hygiene appointment yet, but that's okay, guys. They can still do an exam before your hygiene visit's over, mm -hmm. but the images are taken. That's the most important. So as long as images are taken and probing has been completed, if that needs to be done at that appointment, the docs can go in. That way they can hit multiple hygienists at one time and not have to keep getting up. I personally do not tell my doctors until I know we're at a stopping point and I can look at the corner of mine, see my schedule, and know they can check all their hygiene at one time. So whenever you say hygiene red, um, that's when it's post post images yes. and probing, right? And yes. so hygiene green would be like you've ready done. Ready to go. Okay. Ready Love to go. That. So red means I'm ready, but they can wait a little bit. Mm -hmm. And green is like green light. We got to go. We got to get a yeah. hygiene check. my next patient's here. I love that because it's so simple, right? It's very simple. The very last simple. thing when it comes to radio communication is it also allows the front a little bit of time to prepare for the patient. Um, can you talk about that as far as like treatment planning goes yes. and preparing to bring your patient to the front for checkout? So before you um, start up front with your patient to do the handoff, please make sure you watch our videos about handoffs and proper handoffs. You need a radio to the front to let them know you're coming. Out yes. of respect for our team members, and this is why, 
If you've ever been to an office and you walk up front to check out, how awkward is it when you're in a line of people? Yes, I was thinking about you a traffic know? jam just so now. So that's I was what like, it oh, is. Yes. So you're like in a traffic jam, you're in a line of people mm -hmm. trying to check out, but not just that, but you're listening mm -hmm. to the person in front of you or the two people in front of you and their treatment. And you're like, oh gosh, yes. she needs a lot. Mm -hmm. I hope the person behind me doesn't hear what all I need treatment wise. Yes. It's just out of respect for our patients and for our other team members, mm -hmm. letting them know we're coming up front. So guys, if you're needing to call that you're uh, ready for a handoff, I would say op three, ready for checkout. So if good. nobody responds, wait 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Call again. They're going to eventually answer or somebody up front is going to answer for them and let you know they're either on their phone or they are actually speaking to a patient. So you need to wait until they tell you you're ready. That way we don't have that tra traffic jam. Just imagine people everywhere. It's not what we want. It's not a good look and patients don't like it either. Which for me then, if, if you're saying you might have to wait another 30 seconds before calling, mm -hmm. that probably means you can't call that you're ready as you're trying to get your patient no. up and walking up front, right? No. You've got to be effective. Sit down, please. Yeah. <laughs> How and awkward. It's, it's an awkward <laughs> yeah. exchange. So yeah. maybe it's while, you know, a great clinician schedules their patients in the back for their yeah. team. Um, so maybe while you're scheduling that mm -hmm. appointment before that you take the bib off. Because once you take the bib off, the patient's like, They're I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> They're out the door. They're done. The other thing that a lot of times people ask, what if my next patient's there? Yeah. And that's a really good question. We can allow them to go back into the reception area. There's mm -hmm. not a rule saying your patient can go back in the reception area, yeah. but it's communicating that to the patient. Yes. So let the patient know that they are done with you mm -hmm. and that you're going to go talk about their treatment and appointment with the person that's doing checkout, mm -hmm. but that they actually are busy at the moment. Have them have a seat in the reception area yes. and then tell them that Miss Susie's going to call them up when they are ready for them. Don't just leave them there and don't yes. explain what's going on. Communication is key. You can never over deliver on communicating to a patient where they're going next because then they is, kind of feel lost. This is why I love route slips so much. And I'm guys, I'm the first one to say like, don't print unnecessary paper, yeah. but gosh, a printed route slip yeah. is so important because depending on the setup of your office, I have been in offices where they forgot patients in the welcome area yeah. and the patient was sitting there ready to go, but waiting to check out for their appointment. But if you have that route slip and you see that the, the checkout team member is checking out a, another patient and you have to take your patient mm -hmm. to the reception area, you can hand yes. the checkout coordinator that route slip so that they don't forget. It's almost like a, a stopping point, right? Yes. And it's a friendly reminder because they're doing a hundred things too. So mm -hmm. it's a great internal communication system. It is. it is. And that way we're also letting the one that's doing the checkout aware mm -hmm. of what's going on today without verbalizing it in front of the patient that they're actually Love helping that. at the time. Again, guys, we've got to keep HIPAA in mind. We always, always have to remember that patient confidentiality is important. Absolutely. So guys, if you need any help, please reach out to us. Um, you know, Rebecca mentioned we do have a radio communication cheat sheet. Send us an email. If you don't have that, you know, say, hey, I'd love to, a copy of that cheat sheet. Send us an email, info at bizrock, B-I-Z-R-O-K.com. And we'd be more than happy to share that with you. Otherwise, guys, as always, we can't wait to see you and serve you soon.